The British people have voted to leave the European Union. Is this headline true? Uh, it, <laughs> yes, it is. The headline says, no foreign fishing in our waters. In October 2018, the terms upon which the United Kingdom leave the European Union are set to be finalised. Will the negotiations over territorial waters and the exclusive right to fish be thrown away or firmly grasped? I think fisheries, our territorial waters, are the ultimate acid test of Brexit. To understand the importance of fishing and Brexit, we have to look at the current state of the fishing sector and the expectations of those who voted for it. I've come to the northeast of England, where many coastal towns used to thrive, fishing in the North Sea and beyond. Grimsby, once the world's largest fishing port, 70% of its population voted for Brexit in the belief that doing so would bring back the once vibrant fishing industry. I'm standing on what is known locally as the pontoon. This is the place where in its heyday 580 fishing vessels would land their catch and this was once the Grimsby fish market. This is where millions and millions of fish were bought and sold every year which was a source of income for thousands of people and local businesses. Behind me you can see that the fishing vessels have been replaced by luxury yachts. The pontoon is now derelict and no longer in use. This is the Ross Tiger. It's one of the last of the 580 vessels that once fished out of Grimsby. No longer used for fishing, it's now the main attraction at the award-winning Grimsby Fishing Heritage Centre. Built in 1957, at a cost of £85,000, the equivalent to £6 million today, its crew lived in cramped and noisy conditions, working 18-hour days with very little sleep and risking their lives in often treacherous conditions. This job was considered to be the most dangerous in the United Kingdom. I met with Ron Telford. He used to be the third hand on this very ship, but is now a tour guide for the Heritage Centre, helping to keep alive the sense of what it was like to be a fisherman. Are there many fishermen around in Grimsby these days? Actively fishing? I would, I would say there's about no more than 50. How many trawlers are there now in Grimsby? The, 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 what I know of it, I know two Jubilee boats, but the, the rest, I think, about the same, because I haven't been on the dock, it's so depressing. Mm -hmm. I asked Ron what he thought caused the decline and his feelings about it. No, it's just, it's just a shame because uh, when, the, when the Icelandics put the, the limits on, uh, a lot of people came out of work. The Cod Wars were a series of territorial disputes between the UK and Iceland, which took place between 1958 and 1976. Following these wars, the UK's fishing waters were set to 200 miles by the United Nations under international law, not by the EU. Before the Cod Wars, fishing was a free-for-all, with UK fleets fishing around four miles off the coast of Iceland, catching as much cod and haddock as they could without any thought for depleting fish stocks. Brexit will not change the range of the UK's fishing waters, but it will stop other countries fishing in them. The Common Fisheries Policy will no longer be able to impose who can fish in our waters, and we will take back control. This is crucial to the Leave campaigners. The UK enjoys the second largest catch out of all of the EU member states, and is one of the largest importers and exporters in fish and fish products. Will Brexit impact on people who trade in fish and the consumer? I'm outside the Grimsby Fish Market. It was built in 1996 with large contributions from the EU. I'm about to meet Martin Boyers, the CEO of the Fish Market, who's going to show me an auction in progress, explain more about the source of fish and its final destination. One of the interesting things about the UK consumption of fish is that most of what we import is what we eat and most of what we catch is exported but i think for trade i mean i'm not getting it up about it at all because fish fish is not very high up the agenda but the one thing about fish which is interesting and nigel farage said this that theresa may will be judged on the success of brexit through the fishing policy it's a it's a shame in a way that people have been misguided to think that 
by voting to leave, they're actually supporting the fishermen. It's great to support the fishermen, but that's not the way to do it. There's an opportunity for us to improve the fisheries, to increase the inshore fisheries, to start eating more fish that we catch ourselves. So there's opportunities in there, it's just what they're going to be. A lot of it will carry on the same. Plus we're going to deal with uh, the Iceland and Norway are outside the EU but work to the regs, so we'll carry on with them. Plus we'll be exporting to Spain and Italy, so we'll have to work to the regs to export to them. So I think a lot of where we are will just carry on. Whilst UK fishing may not immediately benefit from Brexit, the wholesale and consumer market is confident and optimistic. This positive outlook is shared by others. The word great in Great Grimsby certainly applies to the quality of fish and clientele of Alfred Enderby and Son. They have been curing fish at this very location for over a hundred years. Their traditional method of smoking fish is world renowned. One of their most recognised awards is the EU PGI, which they hope they'll be able to hold on to after Brexit. They specialise in curing quality smoked haddock and salmon for top restaurants and high-end consumers around the country. They're the national. We, we sell them to Michael Pierre White. He's one of our customers, a big chef down south. Uh, when they go to Cornwall, Rick Stein, he, he buys it. You know, it, yeah, it, it goes to quite a lot of the top top restaurants. Scots in Mayfair, they have it. So yeah, they do quite well. They do quite well with it. PGI, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> what the, Rich, one of the Enderbys got that years ago, and it's all to do with um, it's our own traditional. Smoke fish. Nobody else can call it Grinsby traditional smoke fish uh, because it's got to be done. It's like Mul Moby's pork pies and parmesan and things like that, champagne. Um, so yeah, that, that was quite useful to have that. What sort of impact do you think Brexit will have on your business and venue? Uh, I don't think you'll have any. To be fair, um, as long as we can keep this PGI, well, that'll be great. And I think they're trying to get that, aren't they? They're trying to put something through so we can keep that. So that should be good. As Brexit doesn't really seem to be concerning businesses, I wanted to see whether consumers in nearby Cleethorpes thought leaving the EU might impact their fish and chips. I think it'll be the same. I mean, there's a lot of talk about Brexit, but they need us as much as we need them. People forget that. I don't think so. You don't think it might make it cheaper? Mm, it depends on the type of fish, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, a little bit. Yeah, how do you think? I think the prices will go up again. Actually saying that could make it more expensive, as um, a lot of this stuff probably comes from the yeah. Europe. I've come to York, where the head office of the National Federation of Fishermen's Organisations is based, to try and find out how the negotiations between the UK and the EU are getting on. A key representative in the negotiations for the UK fishing industry is Barry Dees, the CEO of the Federation. With the deadline looming, he told me what the key issues are and who holds the upper hand in the talks. The EU, uh, in the end game in the negotiations, will say, well, the UK wants a free trade deal, we're prepared to give you a free trade deal, but the cost will be status quo on access and uh, quota shares. In other, in other words, no change. That's what they want. That's, and that's the leverage that they have said that they will apply. If uh, there's no agreement between UK and EU, then uh, the EU doesn't get access to UK waters, we don't get access to their waters. But the uh, advantage really lies with the UK at that point, because, because the stocks are largely in our waters. The idea of Brexit was that the UK will regain full control of its 200-mile zone and all of the fish in it. In theory, at least, this could mean more fishing and more boats, and a return to the golden era. But there is a strong suspicion that the UK government will only simply trade away the right to fish in UK waters to ensure that other industries, like the financial services, have free access to Europe. If Nigel Farage is right, for the 70% in Grimsby who voted for Brexit, the end result will leave only an acid taste rather than an acid test.